Hi, my name is Randall Loy, and I'm an infertility specialist in Orlando, Florida, and I wanted to thank you for joining me today on the Infertility Channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of those other big topics in reproductive medicine. It's called uterine fibroids, or lyomyomata. These are smooth muscle cell tumors. Unlike the muscles of the arms and legs, which are called striated muscles, the uterine muscle is smooth muscle. So when the uterus develops tumors, the tumors are smooth muscle cell tumors. Uterine fibroids were first described back in the 17th century by Dr. Rainier de Graaf. The first surgery done for fibroids, actually hysterectomy, was performed in this country in 1846 in South Carolina by Dr. John Bellinger. The surgery went great, but because of lack of antibiotics in that day, the patient succumbed on the fifth postoperative day by infection. A few years ago, I had a woman who was about ready to undergo surgery for her fibroids, and she was to come in the day before surgery so that I could tell her about her case, but her husband showed up instead. He says, my wife, as you know, is a big time executive. She's in Seattle, but she's coming in tonight, so I'll do the pre-op visit for her. I said, well, I need to listen to her heart and lungs. I need to let her sign the consent forms. I need to tell her all about surgery. And he became very upset. He says, we're going to cancel the surgery. Just forget it. She was too busy to have surgery and way too busy to recover anyway. We'll see you in six months. A little bit about the types of fibroids there are. Fibroids are really all about location, location, location. And the only fibroids that are associated with infertility are those fibroids that are growing in the cavity. This fibroid here is so-called submucosal. It's in the lining of the uterus. It's occupying space and decreasing implantation potential. Other fibroids are intramural. Intramural means within the walls, and these are within the walls of the uterus. This fibroid over here is so-called subserosal, and that does not affect fertility at all. Finally, this kind of rarer type here is a parasitic fibroid, and it's growing by vasculature from the top of the uterus. We don't see those too often. The ones we see most often are actually intramural, and then we occasionally see the submucosal types here. The symptoms that are most commonly associated with fibroids are heavy uterine bleeding, pain, that's usually pressure pain, that could be on the rectum or the bladder, or sometimes there can be bowel or urinary tract symptoms. Infertility is caused only by those fibroids that are growing inside of the uterus, the ones that are intramural in the walls or outside don't cause problems for childbearing. So I want to come back to this whole idea once more of location because there was a compilation of studies, a so-called meta-analysis some years ago by a physician in our field who pretty definitively showed that only the submucus, the ones in the uterus, those fibroids cause infertility, not the ones in the muscle or the ones outside. So just because you have fibroids does not mean that you need to have treatment. Now there are medical forms of treatment, for example, we can use Lupron, that drug we talked about last episode that causes the ovary to turn off. And that drug does produce side effects, hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, mood ups and downs, muscle aches and pains. And it also can lead to thinning of the bones and changes in your good to bad cholesterol ratio. So that's a drug that can be used for just a certain amount of time. And when you stop it, those fibroids are gonna grow back. Other medicines vary similarly. For example, progestins, those are progesterone-like drugs. We can use Danacrin, that testosterone derivative that we talked about, produces facial and body hair growth, oily skin acne. So all of the medical therapies really cause the fibroids to shrink for a while, but the day they're discontinued, those fibroids start growing back to their size. In infertility, the kinds of things that we think about more would be a hysteroscopy, a look into the uterus with a little tube. We, we've done those in a previous episode. If you want to go back, you can refer to hysteroscopy. And we can go in and remove the submucous fibroid. Or if we have tumors that are bulging just next to the cavity and deviating it, we might want to perform a so-called myomectomy. Myo, again, muscle. Ectomy means to cut out. So we're going to cut out the abnormal muscle and leave the good muscle. That is not a hysterectomy. It's not removing the uterus. We're simply conservatively removing that abnormal growth, the tumor. Myomectomies can be done through laparoscopy, especially using a robot, or they can be done using a larger incision called a laparotomy. There is really no difference in outcome. There were some very nice studies from Italy a few years ago showing that whether the fibroids are removed by laparoscopy or by larger incision, the outcome is the same. 131 women were followed for 32 plus months and there was no difference 
in their success rate in terms of pregnancy, their miscarriage rate, their C-section rate, and their live-born rate. So if you're in the hands of a competent surgeon who is very familiar with robotic techniques or regular laparoscopic techniques, then that is a mode that could work for you well. You have to talk to your doctor about these things and he or she is the best one to advise you as to their experience. Now if one is, is not so much interested in infertility and she's having more in the way of bleeding or pain, there are some alternative therapies. For example, magnetic resonance imaging, high frequency ultrasound, that's a mouthful. But basically, an MR machine locates the fibroid, then a very focused and high energy ultrasound is used to basically melt that tumor away. Another way is myolysis. Myo, again, muscle. Lysis means to break up. So this is a way that using a cold probe, those cells can be broken up and frozen. Finally, there's a technique used by interventional radiologists. Those are guys who do x-ray, but they can also place certain catheters. They can go in through the leg vessels up near the groin and place little occlusive devices, little blocking things, little woolly worms, and they can block off the arteries to the uterus and that will also cause those fibroids to shrink away. That's called uterine artery embolization. So I had a patient a few years ago, I was getting ready for myomectomy and she was just a little bit, I don't know how to say this, just a little bit ditzy. So I said, you know, I noticed you didn't give us an emergency contact number. Do you have an emergency number in case there's a problem? She goes, duh, 911. So that's my <laughs> story for today. Thanks so much for being here. If you've not subscribed already, please do so. If you have comments of a personal nature, please write me at the email address below. I will incorporate your questions and concerns into future episodes. Thanks so much. See you next time.